So today is Sunday the 10th, we're uh, a little bit afternoon, and uh, just ran, made a, a run to the tractor supply company, which is about 15 minutes from the house, and uh, now we're heading back to the shop, and uh, we're going to work on, we've, we've got all the goats in the same pen with all of our chickens, and the goats are eating the shit out of the chicken feed rather than their goat feed. So we bought a hog panel that we're going to cut in half. I think they're 16 feet long or 12 feet, I'm not sure. We're gonna cut it in half and basically tee it into the fence, run it out, and then we got a fence, a gate we're going to put on it, and the chickens can get in there. We're gonna put the chicken feed in there. We're going to cover it eventually, but immediately we're just going to isolate the chicken feeder so that the goats cannot eat it. The goats are huge and fat and look pregnant, and I think it's all the corn and the chicken feed they're eating. So we're going to, plus they're eating the shit out of the feed. Like we're using four times the feed we should have to use for them. So uh, that's going to immediately take care of that and knock that out, make the goats a little healthier and uh, cut our feed bill down on the chicken feed. And then uh, in addition, so that, that's, the, that's the plan for today. But we also supplement our chickens while we're talking about it. Any scrap that comes out of the shop that we can eat, we cut it up. Um, and the easiest way to do it is just with scissors. Any meat scraps, anything that doesn't get eaten, any old feed, any old food in the refrigerator, stuff we cooked a day or two ago that we just cooked fresh food so we're not eating the older food. We cut that, chop that up, and it either goes to the dog, the shop dog, or it goes to the chickens. And the chickens will eat literally anything you give them. Anything you can eat, your chickens can pretty much eat. And uh, there's some stuff they won't eat, like uh, they don't seem to eat um, our squash. Like when we have squash on the vine that's gone bad, we throw it out there, the goats will eat a little bit of it, but they don't seem to eat it all. They'll eat the shit out of it when you don't want them to, so we gotta fence our, our beds in and fence our garden and isolate the chickens from that and the geese and the ducks. But for some reason, they don't, they don't eat all of that when we give it to them. But any of your scrap feed, any of your table scraps, anything like that, if you're not giving it to a dog, your chickens will eat all of that. And that'll just come back as, as, you know, eggs. You'll get that back. So don't don't trip on that, you know, oh, I didn't eat that scrap or whatever. Your, your chickens will give that back to you. So uh, we got the truck and the trailer. And uh, having a trailer, man, makes things so much easier. Just uh, a little, we got a 6 by 12 foot trailer. We can put a full size uh, 1,000 Razor in there. And uh, it, it's big enough to haul your four-wheelers and all your bikes and shit around. But it just makes things so much faster and so much easier just to be able to load hog panels and, and farm supply and feed into that thing than to, you know, have to deal with getting it in and out of the truck. So, plus with, with the big truck, it, it's funny, guys get big trucks and stuff, especially like preparedness dudes or, you know, off-road guys. So you got a big-ass truck so you can haul more shit. Well, a big truck takes bigger parts to fix and bigger t tires. And by the time you put all the shit in there to, to you know, maintain the truck, you've used most of your truck room. So you end up with a trailer anyways. So uh, we'll show you once we go to unload, we'll show you the materials we got. And then as we put it together and once it's done, we'll kind of show you what we did. It's gonna be very, very simplistic. And then uh, once Lance gets back, we'll build a, a cover over it so that even in the rain, uh, those feeders stay uh, dry so the food doesn't go to mush. So we can feed, we can put a couple feeders days worth of feed in there and not have to be there every day on the weekend like when we go out of town on the weekend or whatever our, our animals will still be you know have food water supply and stuff so we'll show you that in just a little bit all right so we've been told the goats are out we're gonna go try to round these goats up and we'll show you how we do this usually they'll come to food sometimes they won't so follow us usually come to chicken feed or most anything else. Come on, Bob. Come on. Wow, we didn't even have to feed them. They just went right back in. Straight in there. So we're about to uh, 
You can see that's a bunch of feed we had left over out of the fridge from last week's lunches and stuff that we just dumped in there and they're just eating it up. And um, we're gonna build a little pen to isolate the feeder so that the goats can't be eating all the food. And uh, we'll kind of show you that, the steps as we go. So this is the hog panel or combo panel. This one's a combo panel, which means it's big here but small down there so small stuff can't root through. We're gonna cut this in half. We're leaving this, these uh, bars long. So we can literally just shove them between the fence there and bend them around and tie them in. So we just run one out and then the second one out. And then this, they'll just kind of come together and uh, tee into this. This will be the front door. And um, it's just gonna allow us to put all the chicken feeders inside so that the goats can't get to it. They're just tearing shit up. And uh, we're to the point where we can't have tra plastic trash cans. Everything's gotta be metal trash cans. And um, then we're going to take some fencing some of these uh, same combo panels and basically fence off the rabbit hutch so the birds can't get in there. See that goat literally trying to just open that, that metal trash can there. They're pretty uh, destructive if you let them be. And then our chickens are getting up here and just making a huge mess, more than the rabbits do, and they're just eating all the rabbit shit which we need. So we're gonna fence that off. We're gonna gather up all these birds one by one, especially once it gets dark, and just clip their wings so they can't fly. We've got the geese and the ducks spend all their time outside and they're literally just shitting all over the parking lot. And I need that shit inside here and we need the birds inside here. So we're gonna gather those up as well and clip them so they can't just be running around on their own. Um, they're just making a huge mess every morning. They're up on the dock. We've got chickens flying out and literally laying eggs up on the dock there. And we, uh, we'll be going through, move some boxes to get some boxes for shipping or something. There'll be a nest of 20 eggs sitting there. So. We want to have better control over that, so we're going to clip the wings. So we'll show you that some of that here in a minute. Right now, we're just going to use these uh, bolt cutters to cut this fencing here. And uh, if you didn't have bolt cutters, I'm sure you could do it other ways, but this is the fastest, most straightforward way to do it. Um, how much were these bolt cutters? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what these cost, but whatever it was, it was it's well worth it. And uh, we'll use them on other projects as well. It's about to fall over. Hold this fencing. There's one. Okay, go ahead and let this one fall. Watch out, don't let it catch you. There we go. And even this, we won't throw it away. We'll keep this because we can lace it through some other shit to uh, put two panels together if we need to, or we could bend it like giant twisties or zip ties. So uh, around here, especially for preparedness wise, um, it doesn't take anything to keep that shit. We can put it up in the rafters or whatever, but you might use it one day and it was, you know, it's free. So, so that was kind of the intention right there. You're arcing. Yeah, I hear it. So we'll bend that one up and out of the way so it doesn't touch that. And there's that. This will eventually, we'll, we'll actually set a post and make this fence so it opens. For right now, we're literally just gonna wrap some chain link and put a snap link on it just to kind of keep it in place. We've only got to access it every couple days to fill the feeders back up. So uh, it's rough, but this, this will basically, it'll keep the goats out and let the chickens eat what they want. And it's gonna cut our feed bill like no shit. It's gonna cut 75% of our feed bill down. Like the chickens aren't even getting 75% of this feed. So this will this will take care of a lot of that. So um, I'm gonna grab some T posts and drive those. So we need to be able to get all those chickens into this coop, and it's not dark yet. And we're doing that just so we can clip one wing on each side, and uh, they, we feed them pellet feed because we're getting they get enough protein out of that. Plus they forage, but um, this is scratch corn, so this is more of a, a treat really. And I just threw just one handful out just to kind of get their attention. 
and they're they're going crazy over that so I'm gonna go ahead and throw a bunch of this in here in the hopes that they'll run in there while we're doing this and then we'll be able to close that door and get some more of them so I've got these long arms that we cut off just stuck in here which will more than hold that it kind of tensions them and then I'm gonna set these T posts in place right here t-posts or something if, if you're doing any kind of this shit you guys should have t-posts and I always buy the size larger than we need because um, you can do so much more with them but with some t-pins some t-posts and some uh, zip ties and you know cord and shit you can literally you could make anything so I'm gonna drive this one basically right here and uh, I'm gonna use a t-post setter to do that and years ago you know, I'd set T-posts in the garden in California, and I didn't have a T-post setter. I never wanted to spend 40, 50 bucks on it. So I'd use a sledgehammer, and boy, that, just having this thing, having the right tool, if you're going to drive even more than a dozen T-posts, just buy that damn thing. You'll be glad you did. And really, you want to wear gloves anytime you're doing this. You'll get blisters, but I'm only setting two of them, so I'll get it started, and then, uh, then I'll make Cody finish it. Before you get that thing jammed down there make sure and this this goes for any of this i mean we put the whole fence together this way this whole entire pin is just put together with t-posts and panels like this so uh that's where that one will sit we'll drive that down a little more and then we'll just zip tie it in place where we need it to be So that's where that's going to go, and then that piece will go right in the middle there.
and just for a quick fix tonight before we get a pole set we're literally just going to clip them in just like that And that should more than uh, <clears throat> keep those goats out of there. Okay, so we didn't have the camera when we were doing it, but Cody got this one um, netted, and this one's real mellow. That one there, the Cody has, that one went nuts. That's kind of the mean one, and it was hissing and um, making weird noises I'd never heard before. Um, he probably won't bite you, just, just hear that. See those teeth inside there? You don't want to be bit by that thing. And it'll projectile shit. That's so, why I'm holding it out here. Come on in here, and we're gonna um, we're gonna degoose these geese. We're gonna clip some feathers. Don't don't let it down. Get a hold, keep a hold on it. Those are heavy. Yeah, yeah, they're big birds. <laughs> Man, it's, it's trying to bite at me. <laughs> And they're, I'm not sure if they're like parrots or not and have a, a blood feather. But the further up you go, some of those feathers will have um, blood running through them. So you don't want to... Uh... Oh, I'm going to go ahead and let, turn this one. I'm going to let that one go. I don't want it stressing out. Really, we need two people to do this, so. I think, that's good, I think that is enough? Yeah. <clears throat> you want to do the other side or? Yep. I don't know that it needs it, but. It doesn't hurt. <laughs> well, I mean, it might, but. So they've never had any reason not to like people, but now they kind of have one. So I've never been up this close to this bird since the day we brought him home. I'm not even really holding him. He's, he's really just kind of staying there. Well, he's probably in shock too. Go ahead and just, just let go of him and let him go. Angry goose. Those are supposed to be kind of the Watch dogs at the barnyard run shit off, and, and really, like a cat or small dog, they probably would run them right off. But we need them to stay inside here, and uh, to get out, they fly over the fence, so now they should stay inside. The geese are never going to like us even more again. And any, any time you're around goats, anything you don't want chewed up, you need to keep outside of the goat pen. That goat's in there right now looking for food. Yeah, we took the feed out and you can see here this whole feed this whole feeder cage was literally just to put that one damn feeder in there to keep the goats out of the chicken feed. They've got plenty of their own feed, but they keep eating that chicken feed. And then uh, if you come in here When it was real cold during the winter, and when the goats were real tiny, we had these barrels in here so that they could climb, it, climb in here and uh, get in there for some weather protection. But what's happening is the chickens keep laying eggs in there, so we're going to take these away from them and uh, put them away until winter so they have to lay in the nest boxes, so it's just that much easier. That way they get used to it. It's way easier to pull out of a nest box than that barrel. Yeah, you get, you get bird shit on you when they're in the barrel, so we're going to pull that shit out of there. If 
you got eggs that are unquestionable, you can, uh, you know, the chickens will more than eat them, but I don't like to break the chicken eggs open and get them started on that. So if I'm gonna use them for feed, I always scramble them first. You don't have to, you can feed them to the dogs or whatever, but. I'm not sure how long these things have been in here, so I'm just gonna toss them over the fence. Several of these in here are already cracked. But that's why we don't want them laying in there. It's just such a pain in the ass to get to them. So while you're here, come on over here. We're gonna redo this. Like they, they roost on here. But you got a duck under it, so we're gonna make it easier for us. And we're gonna run a, we're gonna redo some of these poles so you don't have to dick up, duck under here all the time every morning to get in here. But I'm gonna pull eggs out of here. And then uh, we've been making a real effort to keep the nest boxes clean. The cleaner they are, the cleaner the eggs are. So we keep a, a couple bales of wood chips out here and then we can just, while we're cleaning, we can spot clean every now and then or just dump all this out all together when it starts looking dirty and then uh, put fresh chips in there. As you can see, that's eggs just from today, just out of these birds that we have here out of this 10 by 10 dog run with those uh, nest boxes bolted to the wall.